All right, you're going to open Flash and start a new Flash file, ActionScript 3.0. Oops, click on that. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to um, set the properties or reset the properties. So we're going to change the frame rate, the FPS, to 30 frames per second. The reason we want 30 frames per second is because the higher that number is, the more smoothly your animation runs. It doesn't become um, jerky. When it's a smaller number, you can see this kind of stop and start of the animation. Then we're going to need to edit the stage size, and we're going to start by making that 640 pixels in the width and 360, I believe, 360 pixels for height. And then we're going to set the background color um, as black. And that's simply going to make it so it's easier for us to see. I also want you to notice that you could have changed the frame rate here in this window. So this is what your, your stage is going to look like right now. Now, in Poland, actually, before we start, let's go ahead and save this. File, Save As. And remember that you want to save in your folder in schools. I'm saving to my desktop because I don't have a folder in schools. So it should be period number, underscore your last name, as always, underscore the name of the assignment. And the name of the assignment is Walk Cycle. Okay. Now, first thing that you're going to do in, is import a graphic. And there is a graphic called Sky in Poland Pickup. And you'll go to File, Import, Import to Stage. I have mine on my desktop. And once you import it, you'll see that it does get put into the library. And we want to use our Align Panel to center it horizontally and vertically to the center of the stage. Now I'm going to zoom out just a little bit because I actually want to duplicate this graphic and I want to make it so it's bigger. Okay, And the way I can do that, Command D will duplicate. And <clears throat> if I move that out and put them side by side. Now, obviously, this is the same graphic, and there's some color variation from the left to the right side of the graphic. So to make it look like it's one big graphic, I'm going to take this second one, and I'm going to go to Modify, Transform, Flip Horizontal. That's going to put these colors right here, right next to each other. Now, I'm going to zoom back in because I want to make sure that I use the arrows on my keyboard to move this graphic so that there is no seam, no empty space in between there. And right now, there's not. Then I'm going to select them, and I'm going to make sure that they are aligned, vertically centered. And then I'm going to group them. And I can do a Command G to group. It's also here under the Modify menu, right here. Okay, and now this graphic moves as one. I'm going to zoom out a little bit more again. Um, and let me put that left edge at the left side of the stage. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and remember that any time that you put a motion tween on something, you it has to be a symbol. Um, and since we're going to be having several things in our library, I want you to go ahead and convert this to a symbol first. It's simply going to be a, uh, called Sky. And um, because we already have a Sky in our library, we'll go ahead and call this Sky Big. And it's going to be a graphic. And I'm going to make the center registration point and click OK. Then I'm going to create a motion tween. Now, I want, um, remember we have our properties set at 30 frames per second. I want this cloud to move across the stage in four seconds. I want it to take a little, a little bit of time. Okay, So in order for me to do that, I want to then move my timeline out and find frame 120. And I am going to hit F5 to insert frames. That just means it's going to last that amount of time. 
Okay. Now, at the moment we have only one keyframe here at frame one. That means that nothing is happening right now because there's no change to be made. But if I have my playhead here over 120, now if I click on this graphic, I can align it to the right edge of the stage. You see that? Now, as I hit return and play it on the timeline, it takes four seconds to move all the way across the stage. Okay? And if I wanted to look at it in the flash player, that's what it looks like. Okay? So even at the end, where it gets to right over here, it's still not completely jumpy because of the fact that it's the same color. And right there is where we duplicated it and flipped it. Okay? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and um, name this layer Sky. And then I'm going to lock it because we're going to have many layers we're working with here. Then I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to name this new layer Grass. Okay, now we're going to use our rectangle. And I'm going to go to my colors and I'm going to make the stroke transparent. That's the white box with the red line through it. And I'm going to choose this green to black gradient. Now, I want to actually enter this, or not enter, edit this gradient. And I'm going to do that with my color panel. So I need to open that up. Here it is here, my color panel. And I'm going to go ahead and move it over here so I can use it. Now, Notice up here under the color panel, it tells me um, what type of gradient it's going to be. I actually want it to be a linear gradient. Okay, that means it's just one color on one side, another color on the other. And right now it's green to black, although I don't want it green to black. I want it green to a darker green. So I'm going to click on this color here, that color picker. I'm simply going to pick a darker color than what's already there. Okay, so green to green. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to um, make, whoops, let me, I'm going to zoom in real quick. I'm going to make this show frame there. Now, the reason I'm doing show frame is so that I can see where the stage is. And actually, I might go ahead, um, if I do this, this is giving me a wire frame. And what that means is it's just giving me a green outline showing me where the objects on that frame are or where on, on that layer are. It's not actually messing it up. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw a rectangle. And I'm going to make sure that it covers the bottom of my stage. I'll use my align panel to align it to the bottom and also centered. Okay, now I um, have this gradient. However, my gradient is going from left to right. I want my gradient to go from top to bottom. So we can use the gradient transform tool. It's docked underneath the free transform tool. I select that and I click on there. Now, what I'll do is I will transform that and see how that line is up there at the top and then I will drag it the line down and now you can see the dark green at the top light green at the bottom I'm gonna go ahead and undo that real quick so I can show you one more time okay I am going to oops I have to undo it one more time again there we go I'm gonna use that Gradient transform. See, I grab the rotate right here. So I'm rotating it up to the top. And then there's a line right here. And that's making me shrink the area that has the gradient. So I'm just shrinking it to fit that. And there is my grass that I'm creating. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and take it off that wireframe so I can see the entire thing. Okay, so this right here, this area, this is where my stage is. 
All right, now I'm going to lock this layer and I'm going to create a third layer. This layer is going to be named Big Cloud. Now we have the sky that moves, but we might want to have an actual cloud. So we're going to use our oval tool and I'm going to use it in merge drawing mode. Remember, this is the object drawing mode button. So if it's light gray, it's merge, dark gray, it's object. We need to have it light gray. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give it no stroke and I'm going to give it a very light gray color. I'm not going to give it white, it's just going to give it a light gray. Okay? And I'm going to make uh, an oval and then I'm going to make an other oval that kind of overlaps it. Whoops. And I may want to zoom in a little bit so I can see the whole thing. Okay. And because we know that clouds are sometimes big and billowy. Okay. And they have no prescribed shape to them. Okay. So here, whoops, and there. I think that looks like a good cloud, okay? All right, now if I select it, it becomes, it's one piece. So I can move this cloud as one, okay? Um, I am going to actually make it a slightly darker gray so I can make it more noticeable, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put a shape tween on this layer. So I'm gonna control click and I'm gonna choose shape tween. And here in frame 120, I am going to insert a keyframe, that's with the F6, and I am changing the color of the cloud to white, okay? And so what that does is the cloud as it enters the the um, lighter part of the graphic, it turns to white, okay? So there is one cloud. Now what I can do is I can also move this cloud in this final keyframe to the right side of the stage, kind of over here. Okay, so now not only is it moving and turning, or sorry, turning white, but it's also moving across the stage. That can be done with the shape tween. Okay, now what I'm going to do, because typically you don't just see one cloud in the sky, you usually see a couple. So I'm going to duplicate this by clicking on the layer control click and copy frames creating a new layer control click and I'm gonna paste frames then I'm gonna rename this new one small cloud okay and if I lock the big cloud layer that means I'm only using the small cloud layer and I can use the arrows on my keyboard to move it down a little bit, I could resize it some, move it over a little bit. I could even use my selection tool to push and pull on different areas of it to give it a slightly different shape. Okay? Then I can go, oops, gave me a little bit more. I'm not sure why it did that, but that's easy to fix. I can simply highlight the frames I don't want, control click and remove frames. But now if I go to the final keyframe, again, I can use my um, arrow keys on my keyboard to move that down, resize it. 
you don't have to worry about pushing and pulling because that's the nice thing about a shape tween is that it can morph into a different shape as